Have you ever read a novel with such a strong setting you wanted to visit that place or use it to inspire your own stories? Dennis L. McKiernan's Once Upon an Autumn Eve has such a setting. So today I want to talk about Once Upon an Autumn Eve, how to read like a writer. McKiernan describes a world so alive, readers find themselves searching for it in the twilight hours of dawn and dusk. His setting works so well because it impacts the plot and is populated with strong characters. These are techniques you can apply to your own writing to bring your setting to life. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. Let's start with how to create a setting readers hate to leave. The magical world of Once Upon an Autumn Eve is one of the best parts of the story. It is beautiful, terrifying, and awe-inspiring, all at the same time. It directly influences the plot and drives the character. Here is how McKiernan describes this setting at the beginning of the story. Separated from the mortal world by looming walls of twilight is a wondrous place called Fairy. Composed of many mystical realms, rather like an enormous and strange jigsaw puzzle, the individual domains are all separated from one another by great, tenebrous walls of twilight. Caution must be taken when stepping through these dusky walls and going from one place to another, or else one might end up somewhere altogether different than one intended. Immediately, readers are grounded in the magic and rules of this land, and given the opportunity to imagine what might be behind these walls of twilight. The twilight barriers are both hard, defining lines for the realms, and permeable and unpredictable. McKiernan has created a massive world. He could have gone off on a bunch of tangents describing all of the different domains contained within his version of fairy, but he doesn't. And that decision to only focus on the domains that directly impact the story is one of the most important decisions he made as an author. Often we can fall in love with our settings, and we want to share our love and that world we've created with our readers. But today's readers have very short attention spans, so writers don't have the luxury of going off on these long tangents about the setting. Instead, focus on the parts that matter to your story. Focus on the settings that your characters actually go to, or that impact the plot. The setting pieces that become obstacles for your characters. Also, if you're writing a series, it's nice to hold things back and not reveal everything in book one. This way, your readers can continue to explore and learn about your setting in all of the subsequent books. You want to constantly be releasing new information instead of rehashing old ideas you've already shared with them. One of the first domains the main character visits in Once Upon an Autumn Eve is a land cursed with a relentless wind and that has two mountain peaks. This setting is an excellent example of how you can use your setting as a character and as an obstacle. Here's how McKiernan does that. He describes the wind as, and the chill wind blew, buffeting Laez and the horses, agitating them all. She came to hate the ceaseless winds. Here, the ever-present wind is the kind of mental challenge that erodes a person's resolve. It is unpleasant and inescapable, and something that can only be endured, not overcome. This is an obstacle. Eventually, Laez reaches the mountain peaks, but they're not what they seem. McKiernan says, she gasped in surprise, for these weren't truly great rough slabs of granite, but had the look of giant hands. And then, to the right, a huge stony eye opened in the massive. In this moment, the setting becomes both a character and an obstacle. It is a physical character that's moving and interacting with Laez, and it's also an obstacle because it's preventing her from continuing on. These are two examples of how you can use setting as obstacle and as character. Now, a stone mountain man might not work for everyone's story, 
But wind is something that can become an obstacle in any story. Even if it's as simple as blowing dust in someone's eyes, that's an obstacle. Or it can be a hurricane and blowing them around the city. Transforming your setting into an obstacle or character will advance your plot because it's giving your characters challenges to overcome, and it can deepen their character because how they respond to that obstacle is going to say a lot about who they are. So make your setting present. Let it irritate your characters. Let it challenge them. Next, I want to discuss the strong female lead in Once Upon an Autumn Eve. When it comes to strong female characters, McKiernan truly understands that women don't always have to be strong in the same way that men are. Yes, the main character, Laez, is physically strong. She has to be in order to endure the journey of the story. But she also has other strengths, and those other strengths more often than not are what help her overcome the obstacles she faces. Laez is determined, she's smart, and she's confident in her abilities. And these are the strengths that drive her. Multiple times, she faces obstacles that back her into a corner. One of these is when Laez has to find something in a castle that's been cursed to repeat the last thing it heard. This happens to be a horrific scream from a victim. The scream is so loud, it's a physical barrier to anyone who wants to enter the castle. Now, a traditional hero might find something to plug his ears with and charge forward, searching the castle as quickly as possible. But Laez thinks about it differently. Instead, she soothes the castle, giving it a different sound to repeat, and quietly creeps around to search for the items she needs. This is two different types of strength. She could have chosen to rely on her physical strength, but instead she relies on her strength of mind and her cunning. However, like many heroes and heroines, Laez's refusal to give up is her true strength. That's often what marks someone as a hero. They keep going even when they fall, even when it looks like they've already failed. They're charging forward. And Laez does this over and over again. She keeps going even when she faces the screaming castle, the terrible wind, the mountain man soul eaters, witches, and glass mountains. Laez pushes forward, and that is the strength of a hero or a heroine. When developing your character's strengths, think about all of the different type of strengths out there and which ones will best serve your story and fit your character. Is your character more like the traditional hero who is physically strong and imposing and a little bit stubborn? Or does your character have a sort of quiet determination and that's their driving strength? Another way of thinking about this is there is the strength of screening a challenge at someone threatening you. But there's also a different type of strength in remaining calm and collected when someone is screaming at you. What type of strength does your character possess? What type of strength is going to best serve your story? Next, I want to share why an editor recommends Once Upon an Autumn Eve by Dennis L. McKiernan. I didn't study writing, creative writing, until after college, so I still remember well what it's like to be just a reader. That is something many writers need to consider when they're approaching their story. Sometimes we find ourselves writing more for other writers and not so much for general readers. That can be okay if that was your intention, but if that's not what you intended, you might need to check your story and who you're writing for. I remember falling in love with Once Upon an Autumn Eve because of the way Dennis L. McKiernan twists the tropes of fairy tales and develops his setting. I wanted to go to this place. So now as a writer, I go back to that book and I look at why he made me feel that way. What techniques is he using? So, think about a book you love, one you've read multiple times or that you find yourself thinking about from time to time. Preferably, this will be from before you really dived into writing. I want you to go back to that book and reread it and look at the techniques that author is using to make you feel that way, to make that book linger with you. 
then ask yourself how you can put your own twist on those techniques and apply them to your writing. So what is one trope or technique you love putting your own twist on? Share your passion in the comments below. And for more videos on writing techniques working in successful novels and other aspects of writing, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you will also find a free guide to building strong settings. And now it's your turn to learn from your favorite authors and take a look at the impactful setting and strong female lead in Once Upon an Autumn Eve to ignite your ink.